We closed with verse 21 in our last study, where it says, No real harm can ever befall a good person, but there's constant trouble for the wicked, which is really Romans 8, 28, that God never allows anything to work for evil for those who love him, but everything works for good. And now we come to verse 22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. Those who deal faithfully are his delight. The book of Proverbs has a great deal to speak about those who tell lies. And uh, in Revelation 21 and verse 8, it says that the liars will find their place in the lake of fire. God places a great importance on truthfulness in our speech. Those who deal faithfully are his delight. Just think of that latter part of that verse, how you can uh, be, bring delight to the heart of God if we speak faithfully. In the Living Bible it's translated as God delights in those who keep their promises and hates those who don't. It's a very serious thing to give a promise to someone. And God delights in those who keep their promises, who keep their word. Unless, of course, we find that the word that we have given to a person is now contrary to what we see in God's word. Then, of course, we have every right to break it. But otherwise, if it does not break some teaching of God's word, it is the will of God that we keep our word, which we have given to others. He delights in such people. And verse 23 Let me read that in the Good News Bible. Sensible people keep quiet about what they know, but stupid people advertise their ignorance, which just means that a wise person does not display his knowledge. When we have knowledge and we want to display it, say in a group Bible study, we want to display our knowledge, that's uh, usually the indication of a fool. A wise person knows how to share it without trying to show off his knowledge. A person who wants to show off even Bible knowledge is actually a fool. And you see that particularly in new believers. They get a little bit of Bible knowledge and they're always trying to show it off somewhere or the other. It just goes to show they're still fools. Now that's all right when we begin, but we should grow out of that stage of being a fool, always wanting to display our knowledge. Uh, Wise people keep quiet. They share it when there's a necessity for it, but never to show other people how much I know of the scripture or how clever I am. Verse 24, um, it reads like this in the Living Bible, work hard and become a leader, be lazy and never succeed. Now there are many people who would like to be leaders in the Christian church, but it involves being faithful in working out our own salvation with fear and trembling. It's a principle in all areas out in the world. People prosper by working hard and with diligence and spiritually too. God never gives responsibility to those who are lazy. He only gives it to those who are hard working in the situations in which he finds them. And that's one reason I believe why he chose fishermen to be his apostles. If you've seen fishermen you'll find that it's one of the hardest professions on the face of the earth. Almost every other profession, all the professions all of us have, is ten times easier than the profession of a fisherman. His, uh, he has to work so hard, day and night, in order to catch fish and earn his living and take such risks. And Jesus chose such people to be his apostles, teaching us that diligence and hard work is something that he looks for in those who will be his disciples. And he gives responsibility only to such. Verse 25, anxious hearts are very heavy, or worry can rob you of your joy. But in contrast, a word of encouragement does wonder. And that is a word that all of us need to take heart to. Certainly the first part, that unnecessary worry And every type of worry is unnecessary for a Christian because the word of God says be anxious for nothing. Robs us of our joy. 
but a word of encouragement does wonders. Now, I've thought of a word of encouragement as that one talent which the man uh, wrapped up in a napkin and buried somewhere and never used. You know the parable which Jesus spoke. Most of us don't have five talents, many, many gifts. Most of us don't even have three. But is there a single believer who can say, I don't have the ability even to speak a word of encouragement to somebody else? There is not such a believer under the sun anywhere on the earth. But what do most believers do with this ability to speak a word of encouragement? Maybe to their marriage partner. Have you ever thought of speaking a word of encouragement to your husband or to your wife or to your children? Of course, we scold our children for a thousand and one thing. But a word of encouragement. This is usually the talent we wrap up in a napkin and keep buried until the time the Lord comes. I really believe that. There'd be a tremendous difference if people unwrap this napkin and uh, start using this talent with their marriage partners and their children. One word, sometimes a postcard, a word of encouragement, does wonders, can change a situation tremendously. And those of us who don't have other spectacular gifts, I want to encourage you to think of exercising this gift towards other people. The world is full of people, and even in our own home, there are people who just need a word of encouragement in the midst of all the exhortations and the scoldings and the rebukes that we give. Verse 26. The righteous person is a guide to his neighbor, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. And that is the calling of every righteous person, even if he cannot preach and teach and explain the Bible and explain the doctrines, at least he can be a guide in the sense that he can say to his neighbor, follow me. He may not say it in so many words, but his life should be an example which his neighbor can follow. A righteous should be a guide to his neighbor, a forerunner, if his neighbor wants to follow, of course. But that is the calling of the righteous. But the way of the wicked leads them astray. Verse 27, a slothful man does not roast his prey. That means a lazy man won't even dress and cook the game which he has got through hunting. But the diligent man makes good use of everything he finds. And I've thought of this as a, a very beautiful picture of evangelism without disciple making. That a man goes hunting and he shoots a deer and then just leaves that deer to rot. Have you ever heard of a hunter like that? Who shoots the deer and then just leaves it to rot and for the flesh to corrupt away. Never heard of a hunter like this. A hunter usually takes that deer and his whole aim is finally to cook it and to make it into a meal. And when people engage in evangelism, they say they've caught souls, they've shot the deer, and they never do anything more than that. It's exactly what it says here. A lazy man, because it takes time to make disciples. It's easy to do evangelism. Just go, it's easy to shoot a deer. But then to dress it and cut it and cook it, that takes time. To shoot is just so easy. And there I see a very beautiful picture of what the Word of God thinks about evangelism without disciple making. And in the church, we believe in leading those who have been brought into the kingdom, into discipleship. The precious possession of a man is diligence. The book of Proverbs, you notice as we go through, has got a, num uh, a lot of things to say about certain subjects, such as uh, diligence, the use of the tongue. And diligence is one of the things that it speaks much about. Verse 28. The path of the godly leads to life, it says in the Living Bible. So why fear death? That means there is no need for a truly godly person ever to be afraid of death. Fear of death is that which is uh, the possession of an ungodly person. 
There's no need for any godly person ever to be afraid as to when he's going to die and how he's going to die and where he's going to die. When will I die? How will I die? Where will I die? These are not the thoughts that should go around in a godly person's mind, but rather, how can I use the days God has given me to increasingly use all the circumstances that come across my life to partake more of his nature and his goodness and his kindness and his humility and leave all the matters of death with God. The path of the godly leads to life, so why should he fear death? 